so we're going to talk about PCOS and my morning with PCOS and all of the uh, vitamins and minerals and things that I have to take to make sure that I'm functioning. <laughs> I've shared my PCOS story a few times since Trials and Trust has started and it's been really helpful to many people. So I'm not going to really babble on um, too long about it. If you do want more information or you want to know about uh, more details about my story, you can go to trialsandtrust.com. I will link like direct um, articles below. So I was diagnosed when I was 20 years old um, and my gynecologist kind of just told me, okay, this is something you have. and we're going to put you on birth control and that's going to be that and you'll be fine. So it wasn't until I got a lot older um, that I kind of looked more into it and I tried to figure out what exactly was PCOS and what was going on within my body and I was terrified. I spent lots and lots and lots of uh, nights crying after being on the internet for hours and you know uh, WebMD <laughs> will kind of give you really scary information, but it was really reassuring to find out that there were other women out there who were going through the same things that I was going through and people weren't really talking about it, so it's always been my mission since I opened up about um, PCOS maybe about a year and a half or two years ago to kind of give people an avenue to talk about it and realize that they're not alone and that there there is help for people suffering with this and there's a lot of things that we can do um, so I didn't want to stay on birth control. I I was on it for maybe on and off four and five years, which is a long time. I know some women who are on longer, but I just, I wanted my body to kind of start adjusting to handling PCOS naturally or on its own. Um, so I was looking to more holistic and not healthy, but more ways that I wouldn't be uh, reliant on like pills or things to kind of regulate my menstruation. I kind of wanted my body to figure it out as like weird as that sounds. I started taking a lot more uh, vitamins, minerals, and better care of myself. I started working out more regularly. Um, I went vegan. I'm still vegan right now. There are some um, pros and cons to being a vegan with PCOS. It's not always the best route or recommended route. It's what's working for me. So I always recommend to speak to your doctor. Um, when you're making decisions on your health and your fitness and your medication. So I start off every day, I take Trader Joe's um, high potency chewable multiple vitamin and mineral formula. It's a 90 day supply, it costs me about $6 at Trader Joe's. Um, the reason I take it is because it has a lot of vitamins in it, because I'm a very picky eater and I try to eat more holistic and I try to eat more well-rounded, but the truth of the matter is sometimes I don't. So it has uh, it's high potency, so it has a lot of the vitamins and minerals that I don't get because a lot of times I won't eat certain things um, like I should. I'm not like the best advocate for being super 100% healthy, but um, this is just what I do. So it has folic acid. It has uh, biotin for the hair and the skin. Some women really. Um, are focused on that. I really wanted to take it because it has vitamin D and uh, vitamin D is very important for women who are struggling with PCOS. If you want more information on that, again, I've like written tons of things on trials and trusts about things that you need, things that you don't need, um, and vitamin D is very important. So especially during winter time when you can't get out into the sunlight, um, this is really great. It's too old, it's pretty good. So I start off with this once a day. Um, and that's the tall or my own stall I take. I usually get this for about 13 bucks. It lasts about a month. Um, it is vegan friendly, which is why I was really drawn to it. I've been taking it for a little over a year and I've become a vegan a few months ago. So I was glad that it was able to fit into my lifestyle. Um, this supports liver function and cellular detoxification. Now what that means, a lot of them with PCOS suffer uh, with being insulin resistant. So this kind of helps with that. It, again, it doesn't help everybody, um, but it has helped many people. It's, it's not cheap, but it's not as expensive as other remedies that I found. There is the pill form, this is powder. You put a, teaspoon, a tablespoon of it into your water in the morning, 
and I throw it down with the rest of the vitamins and minerals that I take. Um, I've heard women say that it's helped with weight loss. I know weight loss is a big issue for women suffering with PCOS. Um, I take it because my doctor wanted to put me on metformin, which is um, helps with insulin resistance and kind of processing your sugar, which is why you should have a low glycemic diet if you have PCOS. Um, so this just helps with that to balance out to make sure that you don't get um, diabetes as you grow older because your body kind of weakens and it becomes a lot harder to fight off PCOS. So that's what I take this for. Um, my <laughs> my first stage, this is the first thing I ever started taking for PCOS when I started doing my own research. This is Vitex or Chaseberry and I've written, again, on childstress.com a lot about it. So I take, it recommends one to three pills a day. Um, when I started taking this, two years ago I took three pills a day because I hadn't had a period in a very long time um, and I was getting nervous so I took it for two months so I started taking it in July of 2014 um, I took it for two months and I got my first period in September I got another one in October and then it kind of like stopped working for a little bit so I stopped taking it you know instant gratification um, and then I started taking it again. I've had really good results with this when I mix it with um, this fertility tea, fertility aid, which I'll link below. The reason I stopped drinking the tea because it was very effective and it's like awesome is because it's expensive. <laughs> and I'm on a teacher budget and I uh, also have student loans. It's about $15 for 30 bags and I know that sounds like a steal because you're thinking okay it's a 30 day supply but it's not because you have to drink one to three bags of uh, tea a day. So I was going through the package in about half a month. So it was $30 for the month, not really fitting into my budget. Um, so I went a different route. But while taking Vitex and the tea, I did have two back-to-back -back periods also in February and March. Um, the tea has the main, one of the main ingredients was raspberry red leaf. So I looked into that and I found that a lot of women do take it to help with their PCOS and their menstruation and fertility and women who are trying to conceive, um, which I'm currently not trying to do. I just want to make sure I get periods. Um, so I found Nature's Way Red Raspberry Leaf. I bought it from my GNC. It's like sold out a lot of places online. Or if it is available, it's a little overpriced. Um, I know iHerb I Herb <laughs> sells it for $7. It's sold out right now. Um, Amazon's like selling it for a lot of money. I got it for 10 bucks as you can see. So that I just started taking it and I'll let you know um, if it gives the same results with the Vitex as the tea did. If you are more financially stable or looking to find something that's going to be super effective, I do recommend the tea. Um, again, different things work for different people, but I started drinking that tea and within a week I had a period and it was like amazing. I was blown away and then the next month another period so I didn't get one for April because I stopped drinking the tea and I don't really want my body being uh, dependent so much so we'll see um, I might go back to it if it doesn't work also folic acid um, inositol and folic acid really go well together especially if you're trying to conceive again I am not I just want to make sure I get a period um, so I started taking folic acid, especially if you really do want a baby or you are pregnant and you want to make sure you don't miscarry, folic acid is a definite plus. Um, I don't eat fish, well, I'm a vegan, so I don't eat any animal products, but I never really ate seafood. So I take omega-3s, another source of really good um, natural without like a pill form of omega-3 plant-based is walnuts or um, chia seeds. So I eat well, not so much walnuts, I don't like walnuts, but walnuts are a great source of um, omega-3. I do it from chia seeds every day with my smoothie. So omega-3s I take because um, you need to have the fat. Uh, so yeah, this is omega-3 and femdophilus. Um, I used to get a lot of uh, vaginosis, I think it was called. And it was like super annoying and I really didn't want to get hooked on um, antibiotics over and over and over and over again or prescribed it. So I started taking this. I take um, three a week. 
So like every other day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and it's been great. It is pricey. I've gotten pretty good deals on Amazon. Um, you have to keep it refrigerated to keep the bacteria alive. It cost me 60 bucks for two or three. It lasts a long time. I, I buy maybe three or four for the year because it comes in packs of two. So, and I love it. You keep it refrigerated. It's great. Um, the only thing that I've had to change since becoming a vegan with PCOS is the omega-3 that I had to stop taking, which is why they're still here because it's from a fishy. So that's my morning. <laughs> um, hopefully this has been inspiring or helpful or anything. Um, yeah, please feel free to leave your questions, comments, concerns, your story, anything uh, below. Here to listen. And thanks for watching. Bye.